In this video, we're going to be removing the clutch pedal and replacing the master slave cylinder, which always drops and causes problems. So yeah, make sure to watch the video. So the tools you're going to need for this are a ratchet or ratchet kit if you've got one, a socket set, 16 centimeter ratchet extension, 13 millimeter socket, five millimeter Allen key or bolt head and some monkey wrenches, some pliers. So you can just take off any hose clamps and clips. Yes, we've got the Golf Plus here, which is basically a Mark V chassis. And the problem that we have here is a dropped clutch scenario, which is not really cool. I'm not very happy about that. So we're gonna have to um, try and address that and um, get it sorted. Okay, so we're gonna try and remove the master cylinder because the slave cylinder, because that's what really causes the problem of these dropped pedals, nine times out of 10, that's the cause. So just remove the engine cover and get as much space as you can. Now remember, each car's gonna be slightly different. So this car's particularly tight and it's a bit difficult. So you're gonna to have to try and move as much as possible. So here I'm just trying to explain and show that the slave cylinder is located right on the bulkhead on the engine and we're gonna to have to move as much things as possible to try and get access to make this as easy for ourselves as possible. Like I said, it was really, really tight, super difficult to film and it was just kind of hard all round. So I'm just removing the boot breather hose here, just moving the two clips and easing it out. It's all simple, easy stuff. Here we go, got it out, a little bit of oil in there, but nothing major. And like I said, I'm just trying to make as much space around the car as possible. So removing clips, removing hoses, removing anything that's in the way, anything that can give make life just a bit easier for myself. These are spring clips, you can see, this clip off. And um, I undid the math sensor. I'm removing the anti-shutter valve. They come up with a couple of six mils. And look at that ratchet. That electric ratchet is the tool that everyone needs. If you're a DIYer, that's gonna get you out of so much trouble. And there you go, I'll just pull it off there. Could do with a clean, to be honest. Now, once again, I'm moving another Torx screw. And this is a Torx 30. And that's just um, removing, helping to give the breather pipe a bit more movement so I can get a bit more around it, you know. And again, removing pipes, loosening, creating space, making space, doing as much as I possibly can. Now for me, moving the airbox was gonna make it a little bit easier for myself to gain access from as many places as possible. So that's what I did. You just gotta undo it, undo the screws and pop off the air filter. Remember the hoses that are attached to it and um, just put it somewhere safe and come back to it later. Now, because it was so tight in there and it was scratching my arm, I wrapped a pillowcase around my arm just so I could get some access around the back there. You can see what I'm doing there. And here's the master cylinder up against the, the bulkhead of the firewall, some people call it, of the car. Now the first thing you gotta do is remove the feeder hose from the top and just pop that off, that just pulls off. Now remember that brake fluid is quite caustic so you're gonna to have to make sure that wherever it goes you clean it later on. So now here I'm trying to remove the feet, the, um, the hydraulic um, hose at the bottom which goes to the clutch itself. Now I'm just feeling this blind because I can't see it because the visuals are terrible. So what I'm doing here, I'm feeling for the split pin kit that's located that plugs and holds in that, that pipe, that brake pipe, sorry, the clutch pipe. So I'm just feeling it and I can feel there's a gap there and I'm gonna try and slide my pick in between the gap and the pin so I can pop it out. The minute I feel it, I slip it in there. There we go. Go on, go on. <laughs> and there you go, you can see the clip just pops out. Now that loosens the bottom of that pipe that allows it to come out a little easier. Now initially I tried to just do it blind, but it was really difficult to see and really difficult to come out. So I just chose to work my way around and take the pipe out and then just shake it down and that proved to be an easier way for it to be removed. There you go. Go on, it's gonna come, it's gonna come. <laughs> so tense. 
But yeah, it pops out. That's the best way i found to do it. And make sure all the rubber seals come out of it and nothing's left in there. Remember, brake fluid is caustic, so you're going to have to clean it up when you're doing it as well. And try not to bend the pipe too much because it has to go back in. So I'm just having a feelers of what's around now and I can feel the wire there and that's just a plug in um, normal v Volkswagen wire where you've got to lean on the back tab to get it out. It's quite difficult to do in this area and I wasn't able to film it properly but you stick a screwdriver down there, lean on the back of the tab and push in, push out and it should come out. But unfortunately, this is how I did it but I wasn't really able to film it because I had to get my face near a bit more. But yeah, it's not difficult. It can be done. It's a bit tricky, particularly on this Golf Plus, but um, it's more than doable. So just take your time and get that done. So now we're inside the car and we've got to remove the clutch pedal mechanism unit itself. Now that's just held on with three 13 mil nuts. So what I used was a long extension and a long 13 mil to get onto it. And like I said, it's all simple, easy stuff. Just undo it, make sure it's not cross threading and try and, do you know what I mean? Not to lose it. So I'm gonna show you here how I did it, which is just screwing it off. Once I got it loosened, I did it by hand. But then you gotta be very careful, you see? See what I just did there? It nearly dropped behind the plastic. So be careful with them. Just make sure you grab them on the way out because if they get lost, it's just another hassle you don't need. So it's the very same thing on the other side. Just grab hold of it, loosen it. You, it does help to have these longer parts, but you could do it with a shorter one. It's not absolutely essential, but you can see what I'm doing here. Just take your time, undo it, loosen it, and um, yeah, make sure to keep everything in, in, in a place. Like I said, this is, has three, so there's gonna be one more on the top that's a little bit more tricky to get out. So to get out of one at the top, you've got to kind of go underneath the steering column and aim in. See me reaching in here? And then you can kind of get at it. And it's just a matter of undoing that, taking your time, getting around it, and making sure it all makes sense. What I did was put a bit of sellotape inside the actual socket itself, so the nut wouldn't fall off when I was extracting it like this. And you can see what I'm doing right here. It's all good. Now, once again, you're gonna to need to remove this bar, which I didn't get to film because it was really difficult. But removing that little bar there is gonna make your life a lot easier when it comes to removing the pedal because that gets in the way, that hinders it. So with a 30 mm socket, you have to screw virtually straight up direct. If you follow that bar, you'll see it attached to the steering column itself. So you have to follow that bar round and up. These are, I don't know why the GoPro filmed like this so terrible. It's probably one of my worst videos I've made, but it's really difficult in this area, but you need to go straight up and you'll be able to undo that bar. And that just makes it a little bit easier for you to remove it out later on. Also, there's that black vent under there, which is right next to that bar. You can pull that down, you can remove it, but you don't have to. You can still get away without removing that. But these are just the little finicky things that make it tricky. Here it is, see you pull it out there? That's how it comes out like that. I don't, I don't know why it's there. I don't really understand why it's there, but it's there. So you, just, you might have to remove that to make it easier. Once you've done that, you can virtually pull it out. A little bit of a shake, a little bit of a wobble and um, it will come, it will come. Look, I'm making it a lot harder than it is. In fact, when you do drop that little vent, it does make it a little bit easier, but it will still come out. You just got to pull it down, just be a bit more aggressive with it. Come on, I'm making, making myself look bad. Here you go. <laughs> and there it is. There's a whole complete unit with the slave cylinder in tow. Now onto the workbench. Here we've got the complete pedal. Remember it's got brake fluid all over it. So just give it a little clean up. Do what you gotta do, make it look good, make it work. And uh, remember to remove that plug. Remember we to move that top hose. It's got like a little, uh, little seal in it. So remember to move that off so you can put it on your new one because the new one doesn't come with it. Now the pedal's got like a little clip that holds onto the end of the joint ball and you've got to squeeze that in and release it from the clutch itself. At the same time, you've got to press the tab on top of the slave cylinder and go a quarter turn to the left anti-clockwise. Once you've done that, it's released from the actual pedal itself and it should allow to push through. 
So once you've done that, push it through and it should all pop out as one. See, there's a little thing on the bottom. Now that white clip is super easy to break. Don't ask me how I know. You can still use it when they're broken, but it's, it's just a lot harder. Here's the new one. And it's basically just a reversal of what we did. Just check that it's the right one because there's a couple of different ones. Look at me lining it up, just making sure it's the right length, got coming at hose coming out the right place because it's such a difficult job, you don't want to be doing it twice. And like I said, it's just a reversal of what we did before. Trying, like I said, I broke my one, so it was a little bit harder, a little bit more tricky, but get it around the joint, push it in the space located that it has for it, squeeze it all up, twist lock it up clockwise and make sure everything's fitting okay. Do what you gotta to do to make it sit in that joint. It's got like a little clip on the side, like a little locating space, and make sure everything works well. There you go, look at that. When you put it on, remember to bleed everything and sort it all out, and um, yeah, you should be good. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. See you on the next one. Leave some comments. Let me know what you're thinking, guys. Cheers, man. Bye.